We welcome you today to this African Landing Day, the third annual event this year, sponsored by the Racial Justice Family Alliance and other organizations that come together to make this a wonderful occasion. We pray that God will bless each and every one of you for your attendance. We thank you for your attendance, and we're just happy to be here. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we come now with bowed heads and lifted up hearts, thanking you, God, for the miracle that you have here today in Vermont. The miracle, Lord, you, Father God, for our successes, those acknowledged and those not acknowledged. We thank you, God, for the great minds, even those who are never mentioned. God, we thank you. And Father God, as we stand here, we thank you for the canopy of shade that you've given us today. And Lord, we pray that the storm will pass us over as it's done so many other times. We thank you, Father God, for those who are going to participate today. Bless you, brother. If everyone who was able could please stand and rise for the Black National Anthem. Lift every voice and sing, tell earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmony. Of liberty, let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark path.
past has taught us Sing a song Full of the hope that the present has brought us Facing the rising sun Of our new day begun let us march on till victory is won. Thank you, thank you. Please stay standing, stay standing. My name is Jersey Mulan. I am your host and facilitator for today. And in the words of Pastor, hello cousins. Hello cousins. Hello family. Yes, near and far. Thank you for having me. And thank you, Rajni, for that beautiful rendition of the uh, Lift Every Voice and Sing. And to all of you, you may have a seat. I am going to be ex very interactive with you all because y'all are cousins. So this is family re reunion time, right? This is why we're here, to rejoice, to celebrate, to come together, to make a difference, to share our values, to share our thoughts, right? To share our love for one another um, and moving forward and making a difference for the generations before us for my generation and for the generations to come. And so today, the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance brings you the first African Landing Day, Out of the Darkness into the Light. We're going to highlight our journey as one that demands we learn and teach the truth about our national history. This year, Vermont's first African Landing Day highlights the perspectives of our elders, our queens, our youth, and our brothers. Today we celebrate, educate, and nourish our souls through traditional food, storytelling, dance, drumming, musical performances, and more. The True Black History Museum will also be featured throughout the day, so you all make sure you take the time to go and check them out. And I want to highlight as well the wellness space that we have here on the grounds today, the Youth Center of Excellence, the Hampton History Museum Towards Freedom and Traveling Exhibit, and Harmony's Kitchen, and the People's Kitchen, who will be providing food for our souls today, along with everyone else who will be contributing. And I don't know about you all, but I had to take my shoes off for some grounding. Because when spirit is moving, we must connect through all things, and we are surrounded by so much energy, not just within us, but the grounds that we are on today, and even the grounds of you all's beautiful city. It has been a blessing to be here the past three days, because I am visiting you guys from Atlanta. Yes. I am originally from New Jersey. So it is a blessing to be here, and I thank you all for having me. So you guys just heard from this individual who is originally from Seattle, Washington, spoken word poet and MC, teaching artist. He'll be sharing two poems. One is from his most recent publication, literature. Their names are mine. Please welcome back to the stage, Rajni Eddins. Give him a round of applause. Thank you much, sister. It's a blessing to be here with all of you. I want to start with the first poem um, to honor our ancestors, uh, because it's so important to give reverence to all their contributions and sacrifices. Without them, we would not be here. This piece is called Middle Passage. There should be oceans of tears 
There should be oceans of tears. This ink is not my blood. What right have I to speak? What right have I to speak? Think my words the salty oblivion to swallow this globe, submerging continents. Mother's one perfect tear for her children. There were children in that small cramped space giving birth in fetal position to stillborn cosmos, tiny infinites with mayhem as midwife. Below deck, below death, below breath was hope hidden in heartbeat rhythm. And now sometimes I see our children are below deck, crammed in into small cramped space, but the wooden planks are blocks and stoops and streets. But our heart beating hope tells me you don't have to live that metaphor. For we are the lineage of stars and suns. Look at the sky and see your reflection. Forgetfulness would have us think the oceans dreamt them. But galaxies do litter the sea floor. No one can ever take away our before. They sunk so that we saw they hung so that we saw they sunk and sung with tears in their lungs so that we saw this is not a metaphor. This is not a metaphor. This ain't no metaphor, middle passage. <laughs> Blessings, give, give thanks. I wanna close with this final piece. Um, it's in honor of my kinfolk. You know who you are. Somebody say, Beautiful sun kissed people. Okay, say it like you mean it. Beautiful sun kissed people. Walking miracles, unfolding parables, ancient scrolls and ocean throws. Love be a rose adorning your ears. This morning will not bring mourning nor a thorn in tears. This forever moment is shorn of fears. Say, beautiful sun kissed people. We are on the cusp of overthrowing overseers, light years beyond heckles and jeers. No more tanning our hides where Dr. Jekyll steers. This love is sheer, transparent and near, as dear as your closest relative here. Say, beautiful sun-kissed people. No conversation on us being equal. Just entertaining the thought is evil. We weave full, fully woven, lost and found, traded and stolen, but look what the eye beholding. Say, beautiful sun-kissed people. Golden, black and free and ebony, mahogany and mocha bee, chocolate hagen dies can't see. Rivers running melanin, shallow men be monitoring, but most high got it all intents and purposes and sovereign skin. Watches this here poem ascends, journeying and frolicking. Summer breeze is talking with the autumn wind, how winter just won't break our stride. Too much spring in step for us to hide. Our victory is justified. Say beautiful sun-kissed people. Solar rise with older ties, our currency ain't tokenized. We close to those focused and wise whose feet arise on open skies. We white supremacy eulogizing, blessed ministry new horizon, and desperate attempts at euphemizing our brilliance with feudal lies still will never neutralize. Too many youth been euthanized, fed sweet as prey to tooth decay, but truthfully our rootful way has truth to say. Adorns the night, salutes the day, and beauty that the stars obey. Say beautiful sun-kissed people. I relate to you so musically, and oh, the joy it brings, like, lift every voice and sing, tell earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty, let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies, let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Let earth and heaven ring in sacred oath, cause after all we are betrothed to wondrous wonders of untold, great grand good fortune that broke the mold, can't buy us off with moldy bread, we more than crumbs inside our heads, and crust just will not satisfy, when banquets alone are ours divine, we walk in gourmet grandma made, deliciousness in every shade. Say sun-kissed people, Say beautiful, blessed, bountiful, sun-kissed people. I praise a path that plants our flag squarely in earth of self-made baskin, a glorious newfound approach that predators cannot encroach, that parasites and wayward folks that a mere glimpse will cough and choke. See, this radiance is brighter still than every sun that lights a hill. It calls from something deep within and pours from vocal cords and pen. 
Say beautiful sun-kissed people. I'm nourished just to see you. You furnish my living room with life abundant killing gloom. You water every plant I have and flourish my gardens green and vast. Sing lullabies to my inner child and soothe all fears of foul defile. You spray me with your sense of grace and lovingly embrace my face. Say I am you and we are race that founded every human trace. Say sun-kissed people. I wake with your poems upon my tongue. In my chest I hear your drum. From my lips I hear your hum. It gets me high and drunk as rum. On you I am forever spun. Your melanin I'll never shun. With you I am forever one. Has there been better? Never one. Say sun-kissed people. I bequeath these O's to you and your next of chin, kin of, and children too, and their children's 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 view will yet still match your vibrant hue. You supernatural sorcery to walk in temples gorgeously, shaming cathedrals far and near, make a white Christ pale in the mirror. Sun-kissed children, you are it. Don't let nobody tell you shit unless they fertilize in soil to grow a rose regal and royal, to don a rose upon a rose of red and black and green and gold. So poetically bestowed, it dignifies your inner throne. Sun-kissed children, marvelous, miraculous magnificence, outlandishly unabashed, unapologetic sass, ultra-magnetic blackness, the right goddess on your epitaph. That's blasphemy, surely, right? Because we know true gods never die. Sun-kissed children, you kiss my eyes with all that sunshine you applying. I say I am in love for true, because you are me and I am you. From head to toe and all between, I love these princes, kings, and queens. I even find you in my dreams, and when I wake, I vow to breathe and breathe to vow. With every vowel and consonant I can pronounce, announce the cosmos all your feats. Build castles for your sweet retreats. Whose feathered pillows, black satin sheets, a sacred lounge to rest your crown from all them wounds been crying out. Sun-kissed people have no doubt. You're all I am, what I'm about. Can't tell my story without your page. Every chapter be erased. You sew my line so seamlessly. We vibe on higher frequency. So let's not love in secrecy. My son kiss people, you be is the key. Rosny, before you go. Before you leave, can you please let everyone, and you guys, please, cousins, cousins, give them a round of applause again. <laughs> please, can you let everyone know um, how they can support you? Aside from the QR code, there is a QR code on the pamphlets if you, on the brochures if you got one when you came in, but let them know how they can keep in contact with you and how they can support anything you have going on. Definitely, I have uh, books of my text. Their names are mine uh, for sale here. You can also reach out to me on www.rajneedens.com as well as check out some of the local black artist showcases we do highlighting the narratives of people of the diaspora. So I, I feel welcome to engage with me. And thank you again for holding space for re referencing and glorifying our ancestors. Thank you. So moving along, um, we're gonna do a little switch up uh, really quick. And so you guys got the opportunity to hear them warm up a little bit. We have the Champlin Mass Choir. We have the Champlin Mass Choir, who, which is led by Associate Director Andrea Ogley and Artistic Director Dexter Chris. Now, they operate on both sides of the lake between Plattsburgh, New York, and Vermont with different styles of gospel music from traditional, spiritual, and contemporary. So please, one more time, you guys, give them a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so we are the Lake Champlain Mass Choir, and as, as many of you have uh, seen us down through the uh, years, about 10, 15 years, I can't even keep track anymore. Uh, we've been singing uh, the best music on this side of heaven called gospel music. You know, we know rock and jazz, all this stuff came from gospel. Even people don't realize barbershop music, it derived from gospel. So we all have roots to this, which is really great. So feel free to join in. Some of you I have been with before. Oh, that's just already been recorded, right? All right. Some of the BEC people. So feel free to join in if you know some of these songs. If you don't know the songs, eventually you'll pick it up, right? It doesn't take long to pick it up. So as we know, uh, gospel fueled uh, those former slaves, just like we operate today. Uh, you go through your day, you have your, eye, your earbuds, in, earbuds in, and you listen to your music. So the slaves, when they were working 12, 16 hours a day, they would sing. And it wasn't always because they were happy. It wasn't because they were having the best time in their life. But while they were working, they were singing, and they created some of the best music ever. They brought the African aesthetics, and they brought in the European aesthetics, and created something that's exclusively American, which we should be all very, very proud of. So this first selection we're going to sing is called I Don't Want No Trouble at the River. All right? I don't want no trouble at the river. 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 I don't want no trouble when it's time for me to cross to the other side. I don't want no hold up at the river. I don't want no hold up at the river. I don't want no hold up at the river. I don't want no hold up at the river. I don't want no hold up at the river. I don't want no hold up at the river. I don't want no hold up at the river. I don't want no hold up at the river. I don't want no hold up at the river. I don't want no hold up at the river. I don't want no hold up at the river. I don't want no hold up. When it's time for me to cross to the other side. So think about it. When the slaves were getting ready to escape to freedom, they didn't want any trouble. The only reason why they would say yes is because they figured they would achieve success. So they didn't want any holdup. All right. So, but even before they made the journey, they had to, they had to agree, because they were very spiritual back then. They had to agree with the spirits, with the Lord, that it was a good thing to do. Because remember, they're being told by slave owners what you are doing is what you're supposed to be doing. And what I'm doing is what I'm supposed to be doing. So they had to decide from the spiritual element that this was a good thing to do. So they would say, well, open my mouth to the Lord. So that's what this next lecture is called. I open my mouth to the Lord. It's, a Raymond, it's an arrangement by Raymond Weiss. See what? 
what the end is going to be. I open my mouth to the Lord and I won't turn back. I will go, I shall go to see what the end is going to be. I open my mouth to the Lord and I won't turn back. I will go, I shall go to see what the end is going to be. I open my mouth to the Lord and I won't turn back. I will go, I shall go to see what the end is going to be. I open my mouth to the Lord and I won't turn back. I open my mouth to the Lord and I won't turn back. I will go, I shall go to see what the end is going to be. As we know, music evolved, right? And they started to bring in music with, uh, well, I mean, they always had instruments. There was always instruments, but, uh, you know, this thing called a piano kind of came along a little late. And one thing about it, um, after the slaves were free, uh, one of the first denominations, religious denominations that was formed was the Church of God in Christ. And unlike many, somebody, ooh, someone knows what I'm talking about, right? There you go. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm Baptist, so I can say it. The Baptists were a little slow. The black Baptists were a little slow because they were trying to emulate their white Baptist owners, okay? And so they wouldn't bring pianos because that was only in bars. But Church of God in Christ said, oh, no, honey, we like that too. So they incorporated all of those styles and stuff into it. So this song is called You Should Be a Witness. That's a boogie-woogie song, all right? Y'all ready to boogie-woogie with us? All right. So y'all can clap. You with us? Yes. Right there. There we go. So what's the name of the song? 
Yeah, you should be a witness. And y'all sitting there like you in the white First Baptist Church. You got me? We are Church of God in Christ right now. Right, choir? All right, so help us do this song. Come on now. Do it. If not the first religion was the Church of God in Christ. Uh, but, uh, you know, at the same time, there were a lot of uh, artists who came out of, the, out of the Baptist church too, so we don't want to leave them out. <laughs> but this next one ain't it. There's also other artists who was. I can just yell. Go ahead. Okay. So this song is called Never, Never Alone. Never Alone. By uh, Walter Hodges. Who did Oh Happy Day? Right? Amen. Mm, amen they, to that. They just two, both of them just recently passed away. So, uh, you know, there were giants long before there was a Kirk Franklin, you know, long before Todd could be all these other folks out there, uh, Tasha Cobb, you know. Long before you know, these, are the, these are the ones who wrote the gospel songs that we hear in church. So, I'm going to ask Nora to come out. Right, Is there a solo mic? I know I'm go out on her. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, that'll work. All right. So, never alone.
So we are fortunate to have the such solos from the choir, like Amanda, and uh, Miss Nora. We call her Miss Nora, all right, uh, because she's definitely one of the people. Uh, yeah, give her a hand. That's very good. Yeah. Now, over the summer for Juneteenth, which Burlington, uh, you know, phenom had a phenomenal Juneteenth celebration. I think in this region was the best Juneteenth. Um, not that I was able to participate in all the other ones, but from what I gather from everyone else, um, it was just the best. So Burlington, you really should give yourself a uh, round of applause for that. So one of the songs we did was, was called This is Freedom. And um, as we know with Juneteenth, uh, when the military marched into Texas, Galveston, Texas, you know, two years after slavery ended, you know, they had to make the people stop practicing slavery. And you have to think about it. It wasn't just the slave owners. It was the whole system. It was the judicial system. It was the, uh, um, the, the police. It, it was every part of society allowed for, uh, for slavery to continue. So when the slaves who are now former slaves found themselves in a situation they had never been in, they didn't know what to do. It's kind of like my puppy. You take him out someplace new, he doesn't know what to do, you know. And that's kind of the posi position they were in. So the minute song is called This is Freedom. Celebrate, freedom, celebrate. Ready, choir? All right. Yep. Yeah.
Let's celebrate good time. Come on. Celebrate good times. Come on. Let's celebrate good time. Come on. Let's celebrate good time. Come on. Come on. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate good times. Come on. Let's celebrate good time. Come on. Let's celebrate good times. Come on. Let's celebrate good time, come on. Celebrate. celebrate good times, come on. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. <laughs> so I didn't have my bass section. I had to do the bass part and try to. Well, it don't work. <laughs> and woohoo. That's right. <laughs> so we have one more song to bring to you, because uh, at the end of the at the end of the day, um, even though we may operate in a world of blackness, and some of us may operate in a world of whiteness, and all this in between. At the end of the day, we got to find a way to work together. That's all that really matters to me. We can't get caught up in that blackness so much that we forget that we're oneness. Okay? And so I believe that the good Lord above want us to all sing this song together when all God's children get together. Now, that means those who do not even know they're God's children, all right? All right? So I think this song is kind of fun. And if you catch it, please catch on. The soprano's going to bring it in, then the alto's tenors, and I'll do the bass, okay? <laughs> and uh, so please join in with us when all God's children get together. Uh, written by Pringle many, many years ago, who was also Church of God in Christ. So. What a time, what a time, what a time, when all God's children get together. What a time, what a time, what a time, what a time, when all, when all God's children get together.
You guys, keep clapping. Keep clapping. Yes. Thank you, cousins. How are y'all feeling? The rain is holding up for us. Y'all should be feeling good. Absolutely. So listen, um, I like to allow spirit to move me, um, especially in spaces like this. And coming up, we have Roy V. Hill II. Um, and these gentlemen uh, who are moving the chairs to the stage are probably not gonna like me in a second because we're gonna need more chairs. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you why we're going to need more chairs. There is not only in throughout the world and has been for some time a racial divide, right? Uh, oftentimes there, there is even a divide amongst men and women. Hello, cousins. Hello. There is also sometimes a divide amongst men and women, right? And so our first panel discussion is supposed to be for our kings. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have our kings and our queens on this stage for this panel discussion because I think it is important that we uh, be as one um, when it comes to making decisions and when it comes to listening to what needs to be heard from all sources, especially our women, right? Where the women go, the nation go. So if our women are healed, then our land is healed, our men are healed, our children are healed. And so I'm going to have the women, the queens, I'm gonna have the queens, Christine, I'm gonna have you and the women, along with Roy V. Hill II. I'm going to have all of you on the stage for this panel discussion. Um, and we should have a mic floating around as well, um, so that we, we're gonna try to have a mic floating around as well, so that we all can engage if you guys have questions, if you want to, uh, voice what you feel, what you think, what you believe during this panel discussion you are open to. So before we start this panel discussion, we're going to have Joe Lavette open up for us with a poem and then we will then follow through by introducing everyone. Um, why you're here, well, I mean we know why you're here, but we wanna know um, what all it is that you do. Thank you, Joe Lavette. In the words of Naomi Long Majet, I've come this far to freedom and I won't turn back. I'm climbing to the highway from my old dirt track. I'm coming and I'm going and I'm stretching and I'm growing and I'll reap what I've been sowing or my skin's not black. I've prayed and slaved and waited and I've sung my song. You've bled me and you've starved me and I've still grown strong. You've lashed me and you've treed me and you've everything but freed me. But in time, you'll know you need me and it won't be long. I've seen the daylight breaking high above the bow. I've found my destination and I've made my vow. So whether you abhor me or deride me or ignore me, mighty mountains loom before me and I won't stop now. Come on, cousins, give her a round of applause. She gave me chills, I don't know about y'all. Go ahead and hold on to that. Introduce yourself again, please, and pass the mic around so we can know who everyone is. Greetings, family. My name is Jolivet Anderson Duaning. I'm the new Edmundite Fellow at St. Michael's College, a scholar in residence under Dr. Dungy in the History Department. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I am Christine Hughes. I am married to Mark Hughes, who's the leader of this thing. He must be around here somewhere. Um, <laughs> I'm so blessed to be here and so blessed to see all of you. I have been here since I was a child, about eight years old, and it was a really long time ago. Um, I consider myself really like a survivor here, like a survivor of the school system and all of that. I'm the youngest of six. Um, I have four beautiful children and three beautiful grandchildren. Um, I guess, you know, maybe I'd call myself an activist. I've been uh, standing up for racial justice since I was like a junior in high school when like the Klan was trying to get a rally together <laughs> here. 
Um, and it's just, I'm just really blessed to be here and I'm blessed to be alive at this time because we, even though our progress is not going as fast as we would like it to, we're making progress and we're moving forward. So that's me. Hello, my name's Roy V. Hill and I'm humbled to be here with my brothers and sisters, keeping it real, keeping it real. Been here in Vermont some 32 years, <coughs> recognizing that I'm just one of this human family on planet Earth, some one of eight billion people, knowing who we are, recognizing that we've come this far. We the people, the title African Americans, and a country that stands on our shoulders. We the people. I'm humbled also because I reached out to three people who are on this panel. They didn't know, and I didn't know that we were gonna come together at this moment, but their schedules were such that God brought them here. Professor Dande from St. Michael's College, Reverend Arnold Isidore Thomas, God sent, anointed and sent to this place called Vermont. They will introduce themselves, but that's just the, <coughs> they're coming, y'all. <laughs> And of course, one I think is the most important in many ways, that is Brother Joe. What's your last name, Brother Joe? Buford, Buford. <laughs> you see, just as I indicated there, we forget the community that he represents, which are farmers. Somebody out here had something to eat this morning. Somebody out here will have something to eat this evening. And you will do so because of farmers. Mm -hmm. He is a spark plug in that community, sent here all the way from Oklahoma, mm -hmm. a state that tried to destroy black folk. You've heard of Black Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Standing strong, he represents that to us all. We're thankful. And sister, you made a reference to women 40% of the workers in the farm fields globally are women. And we look down on them. We don't pay them what they deserve, but we raise blah, 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 if we don't get our groceries, which come from farmers. People, spiritually, they go all the way back to and after the likes of George. Washington Carver, salvation of this nation. So I'm glad you're here, CIA people, people of character, of integrity, and accountability. My brother. All right. <clears throat> Greetings, everyone. My name is uh, Joe Buford. Um, as as uh, Brother Hill alluded to, I am originally from Oklahoma. I've been living here in Vermont now for about, going on about four years. So um, I'm glad to be here. Um, I stand on the toes of my grandmother, Freddie Joe Buford, and then my mom, Laverta Joe Buford, come from a single parent household. So my story may and plight may be a little bit different, but I think we share in a lot of the same visions and stories and some of the dis disparities that we've had to overcome and endure. So I'm glad to be here. Um, as my grandmother told me, and you'll probably hear in my story and my conversation, if you want the success of a day, grow crops. If you want the success of 10 years, grow trees. If you want the success of a lifetime, grow people. And that's what I'm here to share. Greetings, everybody, and welcome. Um, I have to take just a moment. Um, the panel that um, Baba Roy invited me to, it had the word elders on it. And I had to take a moment. Because <laughs> suddenly I am in the elders group. Um, but thank you. 
and blessings on that. I am um, Dr. Catherine Dungy. I'm a professor at St. Michael's College, and um, I'm still in that moment of I am now an elder. <laughs> um, but I have been in Vermont for 22 years. I came up um, as a dissertation write-up fellow, to, as a Henderson fellow at UVM, um, and um, stayed on as a professor at UVM, um, left Vermont for a hot minute, and came back and, and at St. Mike's, um, as I uh, have been there now for 11 years. Um, but just being on this on this stage with all of these people with my new mentor mentee here as a mentor an elder <laughs> oh, um, I'm sitting with this you guys <laughs> um, and I just want to um, say a grand welcome what I do is history I do history of the Atlantic world history of the diaspora this moment um, the sharing of Sister Jersey as you, as all of our cousins, we are all related. We are all tied to each other. This is the history that I do is showing those links. Um, but history just isn't, isn't just about the past. It's about our present and it's about our future as well. Uh, so that is what I'm hoping to bring to you this morning. What's up, black people? <laughs> Yo, we outside. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm Jada. I use they, he pronouns, so I guess I fall under, like, the king category. Uh, yeah, I'm a student. Black. Um, yeah, I just be chilling. No, I, I'm here because I I really care about the progression and advancement of like niggas, right? Like it's sorry, sorry. Uh, appreciate. Uh, forgive me. I'm being very vulgar. Uh, but like you know, when you get around your people, you don't know how to act, right? So you know, excuse me. Yeah, it's really good to see all of y'all. We all we gonna be talking. We gonna be sharing our wisdom and joy. So just tap in, and if you have anything to share, if the spirit moves you, yeah. So um, that's it, okay. Jada, you're a hard act to follow. <laughs> My name is Arnold Thomas. I am pastor of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Jericho, Vermont. I've been Amen. here for over 22 years now. I came here as the first African-American denominational leader in the state of what was then the United Church of Christ. Come, people call it the Congregational Churches, so they're kind of the white steeple churches on, they seem like gas stations on every corner. And, um, and then I spent seven years actually about 10 years in New York City and southwestern Connecticut because I just needed a more multicultural, multiracial environment for a while. But I, I still commuted back and forth to Vermont because it was my home. It's where my family remained. And after 10 years, felt that I needed to return back to Vermont. And so I came back and I now assume the role as pastor of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. I serve as an ecumenical pastor, uh, a UCC minister serving a Lutheran church. And I also moderate the Racism in America Forum, a monthly podcast of forums uh, uh, speaking for BIPOC and African-American Vermonters, uh, letting white Vermonters know what, what are our priorities and our concerns. and hopefully that we will be part of the solution rather than the problem. Thank you. So um, aside from Jada, correct? Is that correct? Yeah. And Joe. Joe. Aside from Jada and Joe, all of you respectfully are elders, right? 
And what has happened with time, in all honesty, is that we no longer sit at our elders' feet. It used to be an honor, and it also was something that the youth looked forward to because there was knowledge and there was wisdom and there was things that society could not teach us, right? But that it was things that lineage-wise is ingrained in us. It was the story of our people. It was the story of the medicine workers. It was the story of the root workers, right? Um, that the children would run to sit at the feet, at the steps, at the tables of our elders to hear those stories. So take it with grace, because I'm going to be honest, I'm 38 and I look forward to being an elder, okay? So if my cousins can, please give them a round of applause for being here today. And Jada, you are so necessary. <laughs> How old are you? Right, my daughter is 20. I had her when I was 18. And you are no so necessary because you guys are in a time where a lot of what was does not seem as if it is. But it just has a bigger smoke screen over it. You guys also have more voice. You guys also have uh, more courage, right, than some of our ancestors that came before us. So I thank you for being here because you guys are necessary and y'all are next, right? And with what's next, you guys are going to have to be able to digest and hold the wisdom in a space that will keep us rooted and what our ancestors have for us, so I thank you. So we're gonna go ahead and move this panel along. I have, thank you guys, I have some, and I'm gonna move around down here because it's not any room up there for me. Thank you guys so much. Um, so today's panel is, what does out of the darkness and into the light means to all of you, right? Our kings, our queens, our elders, our youth. Um, Noble, if I can, Truth has another mic. Um, if you guys can move around throughout the crowd as well, just in case if someone wants to engage with you all while you're speaking, we want to allow that because this is why we're here. And um, however you guys want to pass the mics around to uh, facilitate this, uh, by all means do so. I'm just going to ask the questions um, however you want to start. If you guys, if you have some things that you want to implement as well, just knock me off the mic, I'm here. <laughs> however, you know, however you guys wanna move this along. So um, what does out of the darkness and into the light means to you? And you guys keep that, bookmark that, okay? And one of the first questions is, what is the value of understanding the true racial history? Whoever would like to start, what is the value of understanding the true racial history. Mic check, okay. So the first question, what does out of the darkness into the light mean to me? Um, there are different perspectives, but the one that I will speak on is um, taking me back to the first time I heard about a book called um, the Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. And um, this whole perception of Africa being a dark continent, but not just a dark continent because of the people, it was considered to be this wilderness and considered to be uncivilized, as if there was no knowledge, no culture, no history present there. And that has been the ultimate lie that is still present and that is at the root of a lot of the racism and racist practices that we have to deal with today. Um, a lot of times we tend to begin our story with 1619, which we should, because that's just one part of the diaspora, the African diaspora that is being told about our sojourn here on these shores and on this soil. But consciousness, I think, also has to begin uh, uh, consciousness is the light, right? Um, one version of the light. And um, be knowing that uh, our consciousness has to be rooted in an understanding of the history and the culture 
and the traditions of the African continent that came over here with us and that we held on to and that has sustained us. So that is what out of the darkness into the light means most to me. So before I respond, I just want to add to my introduction. I am a proud member of New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church. We have a table right over there. Um, please stop by over there. Sister A.D., just raise your hand. Um, we are behind like years and years, speaking of local history, of uh, Gospel Fest. We have a quilt over there that thankfully Lori Barnett brought to us um, some local Vermont history. So I did want to make sure that I said that so I don't get in trouble with my pastor. Um, so, and, and I'm so glad that you're saying what you're saying about our history and thinking that it starts with 1619 because one of the opportunities that I see going forward is there's a world of stuff we don't know. And so I'm individually and hopefully collectively looking forward to that, le that learning. You know, all of a sudden when I started paying attention to how much there is to know about what happened before that, I was like, oh my God, there's a whole world of stuff we don't know. And that brings me a lot of hope. And of course, our youth bring me a lot of hope. So when I think of out of darkness and into light, I think about you know, un uncovering a lot of untruths and regaining the truth of who we really are. I agree with everything I've heard so far. <laughs> and yes, keep and keep in mind every if someone makes a point and all of you are in agreement, you know, we can move into the audience. You, you understand with with questions on that particular question. All of you do not have to speak on each question if you don't want to. So no pressure. Thank you. No, thank you. Out of the darkness into the light. See, there's a difference between education and indoctrination. And what happens in this nation is indoctrination indoctrination that comes out of the darkest places and the darkest places as an example have nothing to do with the brilliance of Africa. Anthropologists around the world agree that the first semblance of humans as we know have roots in the continent of Africa. Conversely, if you look at <coughs> laws or proclamations such as the 1597 laws passed by the English Parliament to send their criminal elements to America, the New World. And these were crooks and political types who came here. Many of them changed their names and, consist and consistently raped the land, raped the people. And today, that is the template that many black and white folk follow in 1776 or thereabouts, when a group of white boys got together to pull together a constitution, there were three people <coughs> who were non-enslavers. Thomas Paine, uh, Samuel Adams, and another one. But the one that <coughs> I lift up at the moment is Thomas Paine. He talked about common sense. He wrote the book uh, Something Man. He was speaking to justice and fairness and he was persecuted for that reason. So coming out of darkness is something that fears, frightens a lot of people who have lived a lie and continue to walk on this land that technically belongs to the Native Americans or the indigenous people. But because they are fearful and scream and rape and lynch, don't stop us, us who are CIA people. <coughs> As Maya Angelou said, still we rise, still we rise. You are part of that risen rocket going to a away from what it used to be to make tomorrow a better place for you and for me. Brother Hill, there towards the end, I started to say you sound like uh, Michael Jackson. 
there would be a better place for you and me. Heal the world. <laughs> hey, you all. So in, in the King James Bible, it talks in Isaiah, Isaiah 9 and 2 that people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Um, those who live in a, in a dark land will have the light shine upon them. So for me and kind of my flight, again, coming from Oklahoma, I've seen what that darkness has done to, to my culture and my ethnicity. You know, I grew up 30 miles from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so a lot of those things that happened at Black, Black Wall Street, e even though I was not alive at that time frame, I seen how it affected our culture. So one thing, again, when I was saying that growing people and seeing how you can be the betterment of change is, is really for me to be an interrupter and then to also go into uncommon places. And so even if that meant for me coming to the second whitest state in the country, Vermont. Third. Oh, third. <laughs> we got three more citizens here, so we're third. <laughs> Um, what what difference does that really mean when you're still below? <laughs> but, you know, people tout statistics all the time, so I guess we're third, so I'm proud. Uh, things have changed in the last four years or so since I've been here. <laughs> Maybe that 5000 or $10,000 to move to Vermont is making a difference. I don't know. I, I didn't get it. But you all, for me, is to be a bridge of the gap. Although I'm not a, what some would say, as an elder, I spent a lot of time in my community with the elders and spending just hearing their stories and how to be the change and so as the jersey said with sister jada over here you know for us is is we have to be a part of these conversations because we are a part of the solution a lot of times these solutions are made and delivered without us being at the table and that's why the message is never carried forward or that's where we where we perish right because lack of knowledge if we're not trying to go back into those things we have to be standing in in between or bridging the gaps between our elders and then those who are on their way to becoming elders. So what I would like to do, because we are on like tight time, I want to go ahead and move and uh, within the people. If, it, if there's something anyone want to say, if there's something you want to ask, please just put your hand up. We have a mic. You may have to come forward, actually. Is there anyone? You. No, is there anyone who would like, can you come forward for me? I don't, the mic is not going to reach um, that far. But I agree with you uh, wholeheartedly. That is usually where the gap is, is that we're not at the table. The young people are not there, right? The millennials, we are not there at the tables while our ancestors are still making these decisions. And there was a time when the children were at the tables. But our par parents, like my mom is a baby boomer, you right? They didn't, when we gathered, we weren't talking about the change. We were to have a good time. So there was a lot missed in translation. Who do we have, Noble? Okay, go right ahead. Come over. Come over here, sweetie. Thank you. How's, how y'all doing today, man? Good. You guys enjoying yourself? I know I am. Today is a blessing. It's a having a great time just learning a lot about our history and different cultures and stuff so God is good allowing us all to meet together and just you know celebrate greatness so what I wanted to say is there is a new Alpha Missionary Baptist Church table in the back and I just wanted to encourage and invite you guys to stop by you can spend to win a Hannaford uh, gift card um, t-shirt New Alpha t-shirt, and there's also coloring for children and colors around the world. So it's right to your, all the way to the back um, on the left-hand side. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the uh, event today and uh, have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you for that announcement. And so what I wanna do is go ahead and move on to the next question, but we're gonna start on this end, okay? And with our next question, where do you think the black power comes from? Okay, we need all of that energy. I think black power comes from a, a spirit within black people. I feeling say. that we have always been powerful. We have always been connected with God or a spiritual power that gives us reason for being and reason for living and reason for change. I must say that when I was a kid growing up in Ohio, uh, there was a lot of self-negation among black people. And so we had to deal with our own low self-esteem. And when I first heard 
James Brown say, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. And then followed by Aretha Franklin saying, I'm young, gifted, and black with my soul intact, and that's a fact. We gradually mer emerged out of our low self-esteem, and that was just one of several things that allowed us to grow out of our low self-esteem and affirm who we are as Americans, as people of God, as people of the world. And that is still a problem that th we have to overcome. Let me also say that I think as black people and as people of color, um, part of a larger network of people of color, we, we have to live into the reality that this nation is changing. It is gradually becoming a predominantly, uh, is a, a nation predominated by people of color. And while that is a, a, an emerging reality, the reality is also that 75% of white people do not have any significant relations with people of color, with black people specifically. So as the reality of this nation becoming more and more inter interracial, there is also the reality of a growing resistance among white people for to prevent that from happening. We see it in voter suppression. We see it in the denial of critical race theory. We see it in all sorts of avenues. And we need to, we need to rise to that occasion and say, we are going to be a, a, a nation that includes all in spite, despite what their, the small remaining contingent of resistors, white resistors, uh, put roadblocks in front of us, we are still going to move. So black power is really an, an understanding and an awareness that we have always had the power. We, had to, we have to claim it, we have to affirm it, and we have to integrate it within the fabric of what America is. Absolutely, thank you. I'm gonna follow his energy. Uh, black power, I believe, comes from our uh, suffering and uh, pain. Like about 400 years in this nation, we were in bondage and um, like put in a position of excruciating and tedious work uh like someone earlier said like 12 to 16 hours like that's insane and like it wasn't even minimum wage so to endure that all of those generations i feel like that type of person those types of people they have to be strong they have to be some type of magic so uh simply put our power um to we yeah we our power came from god our power came from slavery it came from uh escaping and following the north star and just hoping and dreaming for something different something that uh looks like my, my children not being in captivity like you have to have some type of magical imagination to like look ahead and look past and look through your current situation. So yeah, when I think about that, it's, it's really hard not to get emotional because like, I can't even imagine or fathom like what my people endured, um, but we free now. So that same power that they had then, we have it now and like even more it has multiplied. So yeah. Thank you, Jada. Jada, you give me life. <laughs> I'm just enjoying being next to you. Black power, as a historian, it's something we've always had. And you've heard this on this um, dais here of the history that we have as people from the African continent. That's where we derive our power. Um, and we were brought here as involuntary um, uh, migrants to this land, but we have made it our land. Um, one thing that I had to, I had to learn and had to grow into 
um, was the knowledge that I am as much a part of this land as anyone else. Um, my paternal, well, both my paternal and maternal line go back to Virginia to almost the 1619. I, I can trace them back to the 1670s. Um, and it's um, a combination of um, European, indigenous, and African um, communities in my blood, coursing through my veins. Um, and that history is something that my elders gave to me and to be proud in. Um, and I would question, you know, sitting in class and that indoctrination of, you know, having come from Africa and being a slave, not enslaved, being a slave. Um, and that works on your head. It really does. And I have had to change that mindset, that indoctrination, break those chains, and um, realize that the my my forebears who were enslaved, that's not that is not a shame on me. And that is something that I want everyone here to understand. That is, being enslaved, that's not a shame on the person who is enslaved. That is the shame on the one who has is enslaving, and that is the change that we need to make in how the history is told, is that we are, um, we are talking about a pride and a power we endured that and whether I mean I have um, ancestors of uh, who were enslaved and who were not enslaved, um, but they're under a system, a systemic system that enslaves you, whether you are actually um, being owned by somebody else or not. And so that, and that transcended even past um, the uh, the emancipation of of slaves. We. Are, often are in bondage in our minds, and we need to break those chains. Um, and I see, um, I see our dear Jada here working on that, and had, I, I was hearing it in, her, in, her, in, in, their, in their talk, and I thank you for that. Um, and um, Sister Jersey, I thank you also for the questions that you have, have put forth for us to answer. Thank you. Um, and uh, I, I hope we are bringing um, wealth of knowledge and help and understanding to the crowd. Thank you. So if you can pass the mic over to um, Roy V. Hill the second, please. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up and close out the panel. And of course, this is the first of many to come um, because you guys have roots here and I really do hope and speak life over you guys gathering, not just with each other, but with the community and with the youth and so that we can continue to move this forward here, right? And so our final question is, what is your role in our advancement. So really and truly, what is our role in our advancement? Advancement, this is not just for us brown people, right? It's not just for black Americans, it is for white Americans as well. What is our role as far as our advancement is concerned for you right now, for your children, and for your children's children's children? Because even for some of us sitting here as brown people, we are descendants of kings and queens who were taken and made slaves because see, they weren't slaves when they were found. And then for some of us, we are sitting here and we are descendants of slave owners, right? So what is our overall role in the advancement? Mr. Hill. The acknowledgement of who we are, the acknowledgement of truth comes to mind in terms of that wonderful question. Let me close on two or three thoughts that I leave with you. Going back to Sojourner Truth in 1797, 
going back to Harriet Tubman in 1822. So John Her Truth was an African American evangelist, abolitionist, women's rights activist, author, fighting against the evil we call racism in America. And then Harriet Tubman, born into slavery, escaped, became the most famous conductor on the Underground Railroad. The facts before us, moving beyond indoctrination to real education. I took a leave from Dartmouth College because at Dartmouth I was beginning to feel a bit lost because all around me was a one-way vanilla template. And I took that leave to raise capital campaign monies for HBCUs. <coughs> Fisk, Dartmouth, Fisk, the Morn Owen, Houston, Tillerson, Tougaloo, mm -hmm. and my alma mater, Talladega in Alabama. An oasis opened up and I saw the history of the people, the history of truth, that I and this nation stood on. I and this nation stood on. When I called the professor here, I was awed to realize that she also was an alumnus of Spelman. Spellman that started, I believe, out of a Baptist church. Spiritual reality, the foundation that infused her and has infused this nation. That history talks about Rockefeller and I think his wife, Laurel. She came to and discovered the rich, powerful integrity of that institutions and the people and decided to share dollars. He was infected himself when he came and gave the support that was necessary. Going beyond color, going beyond gender, going beyond the trickology mm -hmm. that this nation is noted for. Out of that, <coughs> You can remember, or you should know, that none of our schools ever discriminated on the basis of color. Mm -hmm. But if you come up north, places like <coughs> Yale, named after LSU, Yale, who was an enslaver, <coughs> you find that a number of the schools closed their doors God's people who happen to be a permanent, have a permanent suntan. <laughs> the extraordinary Dr. Dorothy Irene Height received a full scholarship to Hunter College, New York. And when she showed up, the dean looked at her and says, we have our quota of one. You aren't welcome here. Our schools never closed the door on talent on righteousness. We were then the light. We passed that light on to you. And we must pass the light on. We talk about faith, but the Bible says faith without works. No faith at all. So as I shut up, <clears throat> I do so mindful of two things. One, not only that I uh, and my wife are try to found the members of New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church. But we have a church covenant that says, having been led as we believe, we believe that we are led by the Spirit of God. We engage by the aid of the Holy Spirit. We believe that there's a spirit there mm -hmm. that's within all of us that says, you don't attack the 
capitals of the nation just because you don't have people there who agree with your idiocy. A spirit that is right and in inclusive in this one human family of eight billion people populating planet Earth. God put us here for a reason. And that covenant at this little church here in <clears throat> the state of Vermont, an acronym you could say is a pad. It speaks to a promise, P, an agreement, A, and a deal. We have to make a deal with reality, with our brother, with our cousins. And so, to close, we're called out of the darkness to this marvelous light, this opportunity for self and for others. And to paraphrase from the prayer of St. Francis, Lord, make me, make us an instrument where there is injury, pardon, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, and where there is darkness, let us be light. Thank you. Thank you. Cousins, please give the panel a round of applause, our kings, our queens, our youth, our elders. We appreciate you all your wisdom, your truth, our truth, the truth, <laughs> all of it. We appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you thank you. So what we're going to do as they clear the stage, um, we do have an amazing and beautiful entertainer coming. But before he comes on stage, sorry, I'm sorry. I need all of the children to come to the front of the stage. All of the children. All of the youth. So what is going to happen is that I have executive director of service renter, rendered, uh, Bruce Wilson. Uh, he has a tent in the back behind the barn called Our Hope and Future. He works with uh, the youth, he works with your children, my children, our children. Um, and um, he's going to say a couple of words before we bring our next entertainer to the stage. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very way. much. So I am Bruce Wilson, Executive Director of Service Rendered Incorporated. I've been in Vermont since 1989. I run programs around the state for youth, education on drugs, not called tobacco, where we open up the youth centers in all the malls, you might remember, living rooms, chill out centers, all free for youth. And now uh, we have an art gallery now in the University Mall called Art So Wonderful. It's all for youth and families. So we continue to do this work with youth. And um, so um, I just want to say um, this is the youth center of excellence right here. It's so it's, it's amazing because I see adults walking around here, all these security guys, all these. Uh, people who are running this program who went through my program when they were their ages. And so it's so good to see them. This, it's, it, what a measurement, you know what I mean, that, that we've done something well, whereas the youth continue to do the right things, grow their community, help out, and be positive um, mentors. So I just want to say to these wonderful youth that, first of all, all this work that we're doing it's all for you, and all the work you're doing is going to be for your little brothers or whatever. You went through a hard time, a hard time with uh, COVID-19 and just school and the adjusting to the, the new ways of where it is today. And um, I just want to thank you. Thank you for just being strong. Thank you for being the, the young leaders that you are today. Thank you for coming out today and representing yourselves, your family, your peers, you know, who you are. You know, you didn't have to come here today, but you did something inside of you that made you want to do it. You know, you know it's something inside of you that made you want to come up here and, um, and be a part of this um, youth of excellence. You are youth of excellence. Do always know that. Don't forget it. Remember it. 
Every adult here is their job. Their job is to help you meet your goals, your dreams, and your aspirations. That's our job. Don't be afraid to ask us for nothing. We, we should spare, we spare nothing to help you do this. Not a nickel, dime, nothing. So just continue to do well. Any questions you might have, talk to your teachers, your, your, ment your mentor, your, your um, facility, your pastor at your church. Talk to everybody that can help you. Talk to adults. You know, that's how I do. I always joke around and, with um, my peers and say, I got 900 PhDs. <laughs> of course I don't. But because I, I say that, it's because I know people who does the work. If I need answers from a doctor or a lawyer or an Indian chief, I know all of them. I go right to them and get the answer. And that's what I want you to do. Get the answer from the people who know. Google, Google might have it, you know. I, I used to have to use the Webster and the encyclopedias, but now I get to use Google. But try to go to the people who you know, your elders, your mother, your, your cousins, anybody who can give you the answers. Your job is to be as excellent as you are right now. Who's excellent? Wave your hand, raise your hand. Raise your hand, who's excellent? Raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. You all are excellent. Everybody raise their hand for these youth right here. Raise your hand. Look all around to all these youth who's been a part of my program. Look at A2V2 who's been a part of my programs when they was little. No, look at them now, adults. I saw Winston walking around with his newborn baby. You know, Isaac and all my peers who was part of this, same as your age. Look at them doing the right things. And I have elders too, like um, Rev Reverend Roy. I have people who mentors me. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a walk over to this education, to that red barn right quick, and then I'll go over what um, African, the first African landing day means. So you have it all in writing, so you can really, I can tell you, and I'm gonna read it over with you too, so we can all know. And then that's all I'm, we're gonna do. I want you to enjoy the festivities, go back to eating your food. But I just always want you to know, I'm Bruce Wilson. Google my name or whatever you need to know about me. Our programs have over 50 awards and it's from helping people. And I have two of them. So the rewards come from the people like you who works with us. So thank you. Thank you again. Please give these uh, youth. Thank you. Round of applause and, and Praise them every day. Thank them so much. All right for this. Thank you. Part us. I know. Give me the hook off the stage. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Wilson, aunties and uncles. Mr. Bruce Wilson will be walking the children through. I mean, around the barn here for a few educational pieces. If you are okay with our baby cousins, learning a little bit while we have from the beautiful island of Madagascar self-taught musician please everyone welcome mickey lee thank you
Here, my guitar. Tsnan dev tanda kani yale, na tor kamon baro yale. Ini ini ni alzala tsnan dev tanda kani yale. there please in in yal salat nan def tanda kan yal na tor kamomba momba Yalzala fara va ve bela gali na tora kamomba momba. Sacha yalzala fara va ve bela gali na tora kamomba momba. Hi everybody, uh, this is Mika Haley, uh, originally come from Madagascar, so I based in uh, uh, Burlington, Vermont, so I've been 
four years here in the United States. So today I'm going to play a few of my tunes for you. And um, uh, my first song, it's called Ambulu Hoto. Um, Maybe the vocal puts down a little bit. Thank you. And if you can help the guitar. Uh, mm. uh, my first song, that's good. Uh, it's called Hambulu Hotu. So my mother's come from a village, it's called the Ambulu uh, where they took the slave. So the slaves means Andevu. And then uh, the first king in Madagascar at that time, he built uh, build the king house in that little village. And then the British people came uh, uh, to cheap to took the slave. So this time I hope everything is gonna be changed, getting better. Mavelu, mavelu, tananga tsiazwa dingo, sadima nanga tantara, nienga nirazambe. Mavelu, Ma velum, tananga tsiazwa dingo, sadima nanga tantara, nienga nirazambe. Ambulu oto, ambulu oto, Avara tael mis manda nira dama tama velngo he tama velnge nanga si changa niza nkniam panzaka ambulu oto ambulu oto. Avara tael mis manda nira dama tama velngo e tama velnge nanga si changa niza nkniya panzaka Ambulu oto, ambulu oto, avarta el mis manda nira dama, dama velngo, e dama velnge, nanga si tanga niza nkniya panzaka.
Zangala lava Kakazu bem zola zola timitoye E mas masini fsokinge Fangatan pita inga mrazambe Tangala lava Kakazu bem zola zola timitoye E mas masini fsokinge Fangatan pita inga mrazambe Avartail mis manda nira dama tama velngo e tama velnge nanga si tanga nisan kenya panzaka ambuluto e ambuluto. Nan sakaran an serangan yun pe tamavelngo e tamavelnge fitu di an sambu vein tam ni an taloa Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the thing is, um, I came here to the United States by my choice, but not our ancestor. Aruve ten bolat stara Tinduve nyanya fara Aruve ten bolat stare Aruve rewale Aruve ten bolat stara Tinduve nyanya fara Aruve ten bolat stare
Oregido no mienga mi taiza mangarana kea mangarana ka Oregido no mienga sa mi taiza mangarana kea mangarana ka Aruve rewale Aruve den bolat stara Tinzuve nyanga fara Aruve den bolat stare Oregido no mienga sadimita isa mangarana kea mangarana ka Oregido no mienga sadimita isa mangarana kea mangarana ka Manitet kalazeng simete Mandur ndur walazeng simet kwa Mamun mun bibzeng simete Manimban tane vorar la 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 Manitet kalazenge tsimete Mantur ndur walazeng tsimet kwa Mamun mun bibzenge tsimete Manimban tane vorar la 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 Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We uh, appreciate you, Michaela. You. Can you let everyone know All right. thank you how so much. they can support you, how they can keep up with you? What information do you have for us today? Uh, 
stay well, everybody, and then protect our family, protect our community. All right. Thank you. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Cousins, please give him a round of applause. And let's remember, he is from the he is from Madagascar. It is an honor to have him here and to share uh, with us in song. So, really quick before we move forward, we have some women from the New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church. Um, they have some exciting, exciting, exciting news for you guys. Uh, as you came in, you probably went to their table. You signed up um, for a raffle that they'll be doing. We're going to also get a little bit of information. Two seconds. <laughs> two seconds. One, two. One, two, three. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. If you did not sign up for the raffle, um, there will be another one coming up. Um, so our table is right over there where our pastor is sitting. Um, and if you haven't signed up, you'll come over and meet him. And my name is um, Angie Pearson, and this is Sister A.D., and this is going to be the first of several... The spin to wins that we will be doing. So make sure we stir these up really nicely here. When we call your name, will you just run up here really quickly over to our table? Bill Neal. That is there a Bill Neal still here? Bill Neal. Is there a Bill Neal? Still here with us. Bill Neal? No? You guys want to pull another one? Yeah. yeah. None of the cousins are speaking up on behalf of Bill. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Danielle Chris. Danielle Chris. Danielle Chris. Okay, we got her. Meet me over yes. at my table. Yes. Meet me over at my Cousins, table. Cousins, please, okay. round of applause for these ladies. Okay, in another hour, we're going to spin again. So if you have not registered to win, come on over and register so we can get you into the next raffle, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. So you guys are amazing. The food smells amazing. The food looks amazing. I'm a little jealous because that macaroni and cheese looked like my grandma made it. Listen, Harmony is, is doing her thing. She is one of our sponsors for this evening. Also, you guys, we have the Black Museum here, so please make sure you make your way inside of the barn when you have an opportunity. I am excited about this next entertainer. Mr. Strength resides in numbers, born in Ghana, raised in the Bronx, currently residing in Burlington, Burlington, Vermont. Please, cousins, give a round of applause for Sin. Thank you. Check, check. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. How's everybody doing today? We appreciate y'all for coming out. Um, this day is special to many of us for many reasons. As the son of immigrants, um, the experience of coming from Ghana to the United States was different for me than I think the experience of growing up in the United States as a foundational black American for some of our cousins. But what we all share through the diaspora is the working knowledge or the living knowledge from the day we are born that for some reason, somebody out there thinks we are lesser than. And so from that place, we work our whole lives to become who we want to be who we were meant to be. And that journey is fraught with many things. So my journey is about a lot of those things. And um, I try to let the music reflect that. Let's do it, Roy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. 
It's been a tough year and a half for two years, hasn't it? It's so much blood in the street. I've seen too many die. So many real ones we lost. Only one question why. I've got to pray to more hard if you look me in my eyes. Yeah. I pray to God make it rain so you don't see me cry. <laughs> oh, it is raining. <laughs> I forgot this was the first song. Let's go. It's apropos. I'm your backup today, son. <laughs> and it is raining. <laughs> <laughs> the universe works in mysterious ways. Thank you, sis. I need that backup. Your energy will get me where I need to be to give it to them. Let's go. Thank you, Roy. PV, I see you. Peace to all the people in Haiti. Uh, this is for those that didn't make it through COVID. They are here. We hope that you know this. Some were there and others weren't focused. Through it all, we made sure to throw it. Mothers, brothers, God's law, Ja Rule, no Ashanti. We grind till we six feet, hustle and bustle. We hustle, there's no rest for the weary. You see, the Lord is my shepherd, my protector. But I can't take the pastor's lecture. Any hate on my name is conjecture. Will upon your block, I'm spin it, selector. More fire when I'm in the booth, seeking the inner truth. There's size to the colors like a Rubik's Cube. I was raised with some ethics involved. I'm from Ghana. It's freedom and justice for all. Yeah. All right. Sis, you still with me? I know the mics. The devil, the devil is busy, but we're going to get it. He's trying. I know y'all see it's raining out here right now. But we got sin on stage. Yeah. It's been a rough year and a half, but we're here. We're going to make it happen. Uh. Let go. I wrote this rhyme on the very last page of my book. I'm from a place where the streets stay infested with crooks. Plenty kings who stay protected by rooks. And so I spit to give the sinus the voice and those without a face a look. I peep the phoniness. They're all transformers. Flow is egregious, but yet they're still pompous. Any competition, best plan gon' conquer. We've been plotting since KRS dropped the South Bronx and shocked us. I leave it up to churches. Teach belief. Here's a message to the smokers. Touch your leaf. You hear nothing when these so-called rappers speak. They should be renamed Deaf, Dumb, and Mute MCs. I'm out for excellence to represent me. I'm no dummy. I spit more heat than they can bear. Not the gummy strength in numbers. I'm bound to be a Vermont staple because these words are world famous like the Vermont maple. Uh. Y'all still here? All right. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I saw that. I appreciate it. Yeah. That's right. Roy, I don't know where you at, but we're going to go to the next song. Sometimes you got to be your own DJ as an artist. If you don't know, sin names for strength <laughs> resides in numbers. That's right. And we are gathered here today because when two or more are gathered. You know that's an African proverb. All those it parts. takes a village. Turn that up for me, Roy. Yeah. Uh-huh. It could go down a little bit. Slightly. Right there. Thank you, bro. And I'm going to remember to stop cupping the mic. <laughs> we ready? Before you're gone and the memories of what's left, I want to take it all in and waste no breath. Time is precious, and now it seems more than ever. I can't wait, won't wait for us to be together. You're a gift that I hope we received well with much grace. It's all love in the details. I used to stop by your crib. You were light of L. I'm breaking down now. I hope you can tell. Through us all, your spirit still prevails. You brought us much joy on the ones and twos. What more can I say, bro? I miss you. Uh, today also happens to be a dog day. A good friend of mine who died, passed away tragically due to leukemia. This one's in your memory. A dog, a brother, and a friend of me. This one's to your memory. Uh, I know not what's on the other side, but I do know that you were bona fide. A genuine soul, peace and love. So grab your loved ones and give someone a hug. Life can change up quick in one snap. There's no rewind button you can bring back. The only times now, fill a moment. These memories are yours, you own it. So make the best of life and hold on tight and never ever let your goals get out of sight. You see, I represent the dark. Yeah, I appreciate y'all. Make some noise for yourselves for being here and working through the rain. 
Come on, cousins. You see <laughs> Don't how even that, start that next joint yet. Hold you on. You see how that rain cleared out for us? Cause the universe. Because it, it ain't over. Right. Never, ever. Let's do it, Roy. No wasted time, because we got to keep the program going. I'm going to make the most of my time. Thank you, Sam. Uh. I think this is the last one, too, sis. I appreciate you. Bless. This song is special to me because it reflects a lot of my journey. Uh. I was hooked from the first taste. This music is my birthplace. Make best days out of worst days. It quench my soul when I'm thirsty. Let that kid be him. Cause in this life, all men sin. People are fake and love to pretend. You can't tell if they're phony or genuine. Me free Ghana, na me baja. Harlem world, they dapper. The South Bronx soon after. And that's because my mama need a new chapter. We was poor, you couldn't come by my house. The bed is full, floor taken. No couch, no balling. NBA lockout, give me a mic in. See, I've been waiting for a long time to hit this stage, make it all mine. It's my gift, let it all shine. I let it all shine. It's my time, won't be denied. And I'ma kill it every single time. So the whole world remembers mine, and they'll remember mine until the end of time. The bottom ain't fair, but we all done did it. Pain ain't right, but we all done lived it. Different intelligence, we all don't get it. Don't let them in your circle if they ain't been vetted. I move at a pace that most find awkward. Doing my thing and why should I stop it? Haters gon' hate, of course they'll knock it. The jealousy and envy is a part of their logic. All I want is to just do me. Chase my dream, be the best I be. Give my soul over legendary beats and make sure forever that the world remembers me. They say. Time waits, time waits for no man But I'd rather make him wait while I go ham No choice but to get with the program So let's go, man See, I've been waiting for a long time To hit the stage, make it all mine Hi, auntie, my gift, let it all shine Let it all shine It's my time, won't be denied I gotta kill it every single time so the whole world remembers mine, and they'll Man. remember mine until the end of time. I want to know what y'all came here for, because <laughs> the way there's energy moving Thank on you, the stage, y'all should have y'all hands in the air. I Thank appreciate you. you. I know. That's good money, bro. energy. Yeah. I appreciate y'all. My name is Sin. Tell them what it stands for, Sin. Strength in Numbers. Tell them where you from, Sin. Ghana, West Africa, but I'm also a product of Vermont. You Tell dig? them how they can keep up with you, Sin. All social media at Ghana to America. Ghana to America. Just spell it all out. And I'm going to have some info cards for y'all. Where There's a QR code. You can find all my links. I appreciate y'all. Mark, thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm going to be here every single time you call, brother. Thank you. Love. Bless, bless. Thank you so much, Sin. I appreciate you. Bless, bless. I appreciate every last one of y'all. Y'all see how this sun is coming on, coming out for us right now? Y'all not excited about the sun? Because everybody ran underneath the tents, or what, did I not see that? <laughs> everybody was like, wait a minute. It's raining. Yes, a little rain never never hurt anyone. So we, as you notice, if you may, you may not have noticed if you're following the program, I am the program. <laughs> I am the program. I had to, you know, we started a little late. It's okay. I allow spirit to, you know, to move this this the way it needed to be moved. Um, and so with that being said, this individual, and if, to be honest with you, if it was not for this individual, I would not be here today. This is my sister, my brother, my friend, my family. Um, self A self-mastery educator and intuitive energy coach who uses her gifts, talents, and storytelling to educate her audience and clients to live a life of wealth and nobility by developing character, learning life skills, and applying what is learned to evoke the best version of yourself to create and live the life that you desire. So cousins, aunties, uncles, please give a round of applause for my family, Noble Olianka Jules.
Thank you. Y'all could clap louder than that. The rain stopped now. Come on. Thank you. Blessings, everybody. There we go. Blessings on blessings. <laughs> all right. First of all, again, thank you so much for your amazing applause and your welcome. Um, before I speak, before I do anything, I give it back to my ancestors because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. And the way that I do that is I take some water, you know, in the hood, you can pour a little bit out for the friends and family, but it's called libation. Because when I eat, they eat. When they drink, I drink still to this day. So please allow me to hit the grass and not the wire. Who, who brought you here? Who got you here? You can say their names in their head, in your head. You can say it out loud to yourself. Y'all can hear me? I like to scream sometimes. I'm from North. So as I pour, as I pour, again, you just say the name of who brought you here. Your bloodline. Because if it wasn't for your bloodline, you wouldn't have a time to shine right here. Right? Say them out loud to yourself. I say, I say, I'm going to say my names as I say my name. I am named Noble Olayinka in spirit. My birth name is Julia, after my nana, Mildreda, after my grandmother. And I was born on my grandmother's sister's birthday, Vernie Jones. I say that because for a very long time I didn't like my name. It wasn't cute enough. It wasn't hood enough. Then I realized that from the perspective in which I was living, I had yet to see myself enough to wear the responsibility of my name. So as we have come here today, 1619, I need for all of us to understand in your blood cells, each one of your cells has a name on it. It has an identity connect to it. It has a struggle. It has a path. It has a bringing forthness. It has an overcoming them inside your veins, inside your blood, inside your breath, and everything that makes you up, whether you know it or not, whether you was disconnected from your family or not, it has a name on it. So today, I want you to honor that name. At the end of my speech, we're going to do a commencement to 1619. Right? As we do with spirit, we allow spirit to move us. So I just want to let y'all know, if y'all ever heard me speak before, um, you know, I wrote a speech. But we're going to let spirit speak to us. All right? I thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Boom. Yep. Oh, there we go. So when I was younger and I used to understand, you know, slavery, and I used to hear messages through the music, like the beautiful choir did at the beginning, and we was educated on the many different slave songs and the many different songs and rhythms that got us through this world. I asked Spirit, if you don't, if you never met me, I originated as a poet. How come I spoke in spirit? rhythms and the spirit told me that wisdom moves in rhythm right and wisdom moves in poetry right being that we are a universe right we are all songs and personifications right so when we think of the thought of bringing light out of darkness i like to thank you all for traveling me on this journey because we about to talk about it so this one song used to sit with me I'm building me a home, I'm building me a home, this earthly house, 
is going to soon decay. And my soul's got to have some place to stay. And when I was young, I used to listen to that song. And I used to understand that that was songs that our ancestors sung so that they can keep their focus that this world is temporary. How many people out there know that this world is temporary? Mm -hmm. All right. And so when you say I'm building me a home, right? It's like, okay, I know where my house is, right? I know my address, right? And it's like they say home is where the heart is, right? But it's like when we think about where home is where the heart is, where's your heart right now is the question, right? Because this earthly house is going to soon decay. Now, when we think of the heart, we think that it's in this earthly house, our bodies, right, that's going to decay. So the question I want you to ask yourself is when you pass away, when your body decays, does your heart go with it? It don't. I stated names at the beginning of this speech. Those are my heartbeats. Our ancestors are our heartbeats, right? However, the theme of today, follow me, just follow me, is bringing light from darkness, right? So, cue the cue cards. I did some research. Because I'm a person that really studies spirit. I'm like spirit, like... I, I, I just don't agree with spirit creating leaves so detailed and then want to destroy the world. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't understand it. I just don't agree with having a spirit that makes us all so uniquely to have our own fingerprints and then want us to fight against each other. I, I'm sorry. I don't agree with that. I, I don't agree with this thing called unconditional love and then people putting a lot of conditions on it. I think we got it misconstrued. I think we messed up. Because spirit, who's mathematically correct at all times, who can make all of us individually special, who can love us so much to make you different than you, the different than you, the different than you, and keep this song going, why do we now have a situation like 1619? I ask questions like that, right? So I said, well, what's the meaning of darkness? So I found some things. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all with me? All right. Most of the time when people talk, they got a pen in the past. So if anybody recorded me, please share that with me at the end. So, <laughs> all right, so you must know. Mm, you got to know what you're working with, right? So you have to understand the truth about darkness, right? Pure darkness is weak against balance called order. Did y'all know that? Let me say it again. Pure darkness is weak against the balance that's called order. So it's like, oh, that's deep, right? So when you have order, you can't have pure darkness, right? So this is some more truths. Just follow me. We're getting to a good point. God added light. But for many, darkness symbolizes all that is negative, harmful, evil, and fearful. God gave equal importance. This is what got me. God gave equal importance and permissions to darkness and light. And all life, including human life, begins and develops in dark. So we had the elders sitting here talking about we are a land of farmers, right? Right? So as a farmer, in order you want things to grow, the first thing you do is you put it in darkness, right? You take a seed and you bury it in complete darkness so that it could develop. So I said, oh, this dark thing has something to do with it, right? So let's do some more truths about darkness. We need darkness <laughs> to feed our spirits, protect our health, and protect the health of this planet. Look at that. Light at night may be a sign of life on earth, but the darkness will proclaim our true intelligence, right? So, this is beautiful words, and it's expressing what darkness is. However, how many of us really experience darkness in our lives, right? Like, personal level, right? And so, I'm a believer of what is, what as is above, so shall below. As is without, so shall within. So, I really believe that everything that we are experiencing in this world is a reflection of what we're all going through on the inside. Can I get some, anybody agree with me? I see some heads nodding. All right, some amens. I, I'm, a, I'm a person that I like to interact. Y'all can talk to me. Uh, there we go, right? So, 
If that is the case, then we should switch the focus from the outside to the inside. Wouldn't you think? We, yes, right? All right, so thank you. Follow with me. So in my life, you know, like I said, I didn't like my name, right? But I was going through some darkness. I had to develop myself into who I am. So I didn't understand, like we all, why I was here. What is the purpose? So I started to ask questions, right? I started to go through things. And when I look at my life from where I am now, I, I now understand why I went through that darkness. But in 1619, we ain't know, right? When you, was, when you was going through your situations of turmoil, you just didn't know, right? When we, when we was on boats, Right? We didn't know. When we, when we were put in positions where we were honoring our ancestors by enslaving people and treating them bad, we did not know. We were doing what our ancestors at that time told us to do, right? On one side, we had ancestors telling us to treat people, make yourself superior, and treat them as they're less than you. And on another side, we had do what you're told to do. Right? But in honor of our parents and our traditions, we just did it. Just follow me. Because that was 1619. What year we in? Who? 1912? 18? 15? 2021. 2021? Those are the numbers that they say on the year? 21st century. 21st century. So I'm going to take a pause and I want us all to just look around. Because what 1619 represents is the 400 years that it took for this conversation to continue to happen. And we're going to put it like that. The fact that we are bringing darkness to light still after 400 years, we have work to do. So the definition of darkness and light and how it works, right? So I've seen this in the Bible. Isaiah 45, 7, it says, I form light and create darkness. <laughs> I make peace and I create evil. The Lord do all things. Wait a minute, right? Now, we're sitting here. We have experienced this. We have books to talk about this 400 years. And God's answer to it is, I form light and I create darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. I'm going to be honest with you. I have said many church sermons. I ain't never heard this verse. I'm going to be honest with you. How many of you heard this verse? You see? Right? You, you heard it? All right. Right? And it's like, this has to ask us questions. Because we're here today to, to celebrate, right? And to get some education on how to bring, what? Darkness into light. Right? So we got to understand, again, how does this work? We have to realize that we're energies. And we have the will to choose which way we want to go. We want to go dark or you want to go light, right? Because we all understand our will. Just follow me. But when you understand a thing, you'll be able to make a better decision. So I looked up what this darkness is. And darkness makes you feel fear and grief. And you go with and abide with, um, one second, fear and grief go with you and abide with you when, you when your way is the way of pain and loneliness. This is the way of darkness, right? So when we go through situations and we, 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 we don't know how to feel about it, we don't have the words and the expressions of them, we go into this place internally and we feel lonely, right? And I read somewhere that in African um, traditions, whenever someone was going through something, they never let them be alone. They used to bring them out and put them around a tree. And the whole community would surround them and would allow those energies to flow through them until they come out, right? And so what that means is like when you're going through darkness, you're not supposed to separate. You're supposed to come together. However, in times like today, we all experienced this situation of COVID and everything. We all separated instead of coming together. And that brings up different emotions like fear and resentment and empowerment and hatred, right? And in order to go through that, like we was talking earlier, there's a process. 
that you have to go through in order to come out of it. It's all in science. Our goal is to reach lightness. So we got to look at what light is. And light is to reveal a thing. So in my research, I found out that darkness defines a thing. You heard a lot of this as we went through today's you know, ceremony and celebration. We had, I forget your name, but we had the, um, one of the panelists speaking about where we get our black power from, where we get our human power from. I'm a person that I don't think we're colors. I think we're people. Can, I, can anybody else agree with me? Yeah, because you, know, you put me in certain different rooms, I'm many different colors myself, right? So, but I'm a human being, right? And so when you take your struggles and you look at them and you understand that um, we get our power from our struggles. And I do apologize because of time. I'm not going to be able to go through this. So, so let's do this. There's system and processes that we're here to do. We have our ancestors, but the, the, the truth of this world is that we are here to keep our bloodline song going, right? And how do we do that is whether or not you know what your bloodline song is, it's inside of you. It's in your thoughts. It's in your behaviors. The situations that has happened years ago are still happening now because we're still talking about them the same way. We haven't allowed ourselves to go through the processes to really eradicate them, make ourselves aware of them, and heal them in our own selves. Integrity means what you do alone is your truth. And a lot of times we, we slide and we look past how we feel while we're alone. When you're alone and you feel alone, that's your darkness. That's when you face off with that darkness. We are from an entity called source energy. And I want y'all to follow me with this. Source energy comes from darkness. My proof is the Big Bang Theory. In the beginning, God is the first words of the all spiritual books, right? We could say it in Hindu, we could say it in Arabic, we could say it in, in, in Christian. In the beginning, God. Then it talks about God was traveling through this earth that was void and dense. That's darkness. And God said, let there be light. So it took an entity to be in darkness and to understand the power that was within that entity to then have enough in itself to know that what it speaks, what it thinks, how it likes to exist, it can change some things and create a big bang. Billions of years ago, that entity did that and look at all of us, right? That's the big bang theory. And sometimes we like to separate the spiritual speaking from the science manifestations and act like that they're not sisters that are in alignment. What you speak about yourself, what you speak to your children, what you speak to your ancestors is what you're bringing light to in your bloodline. So on today, how we bring darkness into light is by us looking at the darkness and appreciating and picking out the struggles and using our will to go forth with truth because can none of us go to God when you have darkness by your side because God is all but light. This thing in which we call darkness is our temporary home, trying to get some validations for some things that we feel as though this world owes us. We had to go through these things because look at how great our nation is because we've gone through this thing. It is a beautiful thing to sit here in Vermont. I have been many different places, Atlanta, Vermont. I have been to marches. What's happening in Vermont, and I've said this in Juneteenth, I'm going to say it again, is a beautiful thing because we are our ancestors and we are bringing them into light because we're standing on this land together today. Now I want you all to give yourself a round of applause because as keynote speaker, I'm only here to speak about what is already here. That's why God shortened my time, told me to write, put the speech away and told me to just to open up my heart and talk to everybody, right? So I'm moving into the Mark told me to make sure I separated it. <laughs> the commencement of what 19, 
1619 is. We have a responsibility. That's what it is. This, these, these parties, these cookouts, family, they are so dope, right? We come together, we get to dance. <laughs> we get to party, we get to have the kids play, we get to enjoy each other's company. But we have a responsibility. And it's only one way we can all respond to our ability to be light. I'm gonna say it again. We have a responsibility and there's only one way for us all to respond to our ability to be light. It's a bridge between darkness and light that must transform us into the Big Bang. And that's called forgiveness. Forgiveness is an energy that is a compound word when we speak it in English. The compound words is forgive and this, right? To break down forgive, forth give. Forth give is to allow it to happen. We can't go back and change anything. But where we are right now, we can say, I'm sorry. I see you. 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 I can't walk in your shoes because I cannot take my being and put it into your temporary body. But I can hear your story. And I honor you. I respect you. I may not understand everything that you've gone through or have went through, but I know that we have some things in common called being humans. I know that your heart beat like my heart beat. I know you got feelings like I feel. How did that hurt you? How does that affect you? How does your ancestors who brought people over here affect you in 1619? How does this story affect you being the ancestor that was brought here? How does it affect you when we raped you? How does it affect you to be raped? How does it affect you to stand next to me in the store and I don't say hello to you today? So in commencement of everything that went down in 1619, let us start having the conversations every day on your block, in your house. Let's Zoom call by standing on our porch and looking across the street at our neighbor and saying, hi, my name is Noble. I don't know your story, but if you ever feel like you want to sit down and talk to me about it, I have ears to listen. I have a heart to receive. And we can't change what me and my ancestors did to each other, but I know that you have children. Like I have children. And if we don't come together and do something to this earth, we won't be humans. So on today, 1619, it is very important that America takes accountability of this story because the power that we have is built on the ancestors' back of the story America refuses to tell. So again, we need you to tell a story. The best way to erase a people is to stop telling their story. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know all of my story because your ancestors burnt books. But you know the story because y'all talk about it in places that we can't go. So the way we're going to commence 1619 in Vermont is by, ancestors said it earlier today, we're about to do a pad. We're about to make a promise that we are here today, and we're going to change the story and the song of our ancestors. We're about to make an agreement that we can all do it together. Is that right? Yeah. I ain't hear no agreements. I hear it loud enough. I hear it. I'm from Newark, New Jersey. I hear it. I still ain't hear it. I church, I hear y'all. Church, I hear y'all say y'all agree. I hear y'all. My man back there in the corner by the cars, I didn't hear you. Like, like, like for real. Act like I said I'm about to get somebody a $1 million out of my pocket right now. A absolutely. I hear you now. And we're about to be determined, disciplined, and dedicated. I took that from sin because we are more significant in numbers, all right? So that is my time. 
I thank you all for coming together to celebrate 1619. I wish I had more time, but in honor of spirit, my name is Noble Jules. You can follow me on all social media under Noble Jules. That's N-O-B-L-E-J-U-L-Z. I hope that my time here has added some kind of value to you. And I hope tomorrow you wake up and say, darkness, come to me, because I am the light you were looking for. Ashe? Ashe. And so it is. Please give Noble Jules a round of applause. I'm Reverend Dr. Christopher Vaughn Cockrell, the proud pastor of the New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church of Burlington, Vermont. I'm here with my members today. Um, we're here at African Landing Day enjoying a wonderful overcast day, but just being blessed. We are here giving away t-shirts and $100 gift cards from Hannaford um, Grocery Store. We're just excited to be here celebrating this wonderful occasion. This is our third anniversary and God's truly given us a beautiful day. We've got great entertainment, wonderful spoken word, and some just great speakers that's been here today. Free food, and it's been a blessing just to be here. And we're just excited to be a part of today's event. Thank you very much. You are media and New Alpha this day is newsworthy. It's newsworthy that we're here celebrating, acknowledging First African Landing Day. And it's great because New Alpha speaks to newness. And the celebration in many ways speaks to the impact that New Alpha is making on the community of Vermont. And at the same time, it's newsworthy that Vermont, as well as the nation, is beginning to acknowledge the truth about the first African landing day. Our theme, of course, is out of darkness into light, too frequently without education about the reality of history and the reality of contributions that African Americans and the church in the African American community makes to the community, the family, and to our country. Uh, we are excited that uh, Reverend Dr. Christopher Von Cockrell has been called to Vermont, has been called to New Alpha, and making a difference as a mother church in our community at large. We speak of uh, out of darkness into uh, the light. Uh, everyone who understands history understands that Mississippi, from whence he came, is a place that has not been kind to African Americans. Fact is, research shows that among the states responsible for very ugly things done to African American community, African American individuals, no, Mississippi is number one. However, uh, that change is coming about, and you might say it's a new day as we see uh, leaders uh, such as uh, Dr. Cockrell reaching out to communities and doing so thanks be not only to the Holy Spirit that we believe in, but also thanks to technology. The, the, con the pandemic has closed many churches across the land technology such as Zoom makes it possible for us to be alive and minister to people via technology such as Zoom as well as those who are hurting in so many different ways. So thank you for reaching out for the newsworthy you might say. There's a scripture that says having faith without action is no faith. Well, New Alpha is about action and has been about action since its founding in the late 1980s. I might add that my wife and I are also charter or charter founding members of New Alpha. Uh, she couldn't be here today, but I feel that she would probably endorse my sharing this New Alpha presence that's having an impact on the furtherance and the betterment of our state. Vermont. Hi, my name is Adline Robertson, and I am a longtime member of New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church here in Burlington, Vermont. And 
We are down here at the Intervale Center celebrating the third annual um, African landing. Um, and we have a table here, but we also want to show you our wonderful quilt. Um, what you're seeing now is a quilt of many years of our Gospel Fest that we perform here um, in Burlington, Vermont. And you can see it goes, um, there's the oldest one is 1995, which is down there, and it goes 1996, you see 1997. It's like all the years of our Gospel Fest, these are represented um, through our t-shirts that we turn into a quilt uh, for, um, for our history to show um, the many 30 years that we've been singing Gospel Fest in this community and spreading the word um, and the good news of Jesus Christ through New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church. So thank you very much. Um, and you can tune in to New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church anytime. If you like, we have our worship services on um, Zoom. Um, and if you like to attend, um, if you send us information to our email address, that is n-a-m-b-c dot eight oh two dot nineteen eighty nine at gmail dot com and that's how you can get in contact with us at New Alpha Miss Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you and God bless you. Hello, my name is Christopher Thompson. Um, I'm doing security at this event here, which is a blessing, especially for the black community in the state of Vermont. Um, my situation is a unique situation because this is my way of, of trying to give back to the community. Um, I was uh, I was not very a good person to the community, but this is my way of changing my life, changing my way around, and this is the welcoming I got since I maxed out, and I'm proud to say that. Um, Today is a wonderful day for you know the kids and everybody else to have fun out here, and you know uh, uh, just to meet the good people of the of our community. You know what I'm saying? Just to say hello, stop by. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Pat Attilio. And I've been with the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance for three years now. And I work on the data team. Uh, we gather data showing racial disparities if they exist in Vermont, and including things like traffic stops. Hi, my name is Gail Pru. I've been with the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance for about a year now. And I also am on the data team. I help gathering racially disaggregated data, as well as maintaining the website, giving updates, and just making sure everything's running smoothly in the background. Hello, 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 everybody. Blessings on blessings on blessings. My name is Noble Jules. Today, I had the honor of being a keynote speaker here at the first landing Vermont event. Listen, listen, it's the first landing event. I, I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed with all the excitement. I'm forgetting the name of the title of the event, I'll be honest with you. But today, what we did, let's get to the point. What we did today, we talked about what needed to be talked about. 1619 Project and how it is very impeccably important that we be the light to bring this darkness down here in America. And we make sure that our story is told and uphold in our bloodline so that our narrative can continue rising to the top from where the bottom where they tried to put us. Because we gotta understand something. We are not slaves. We're not even descendants of slaves. That's their story for us. It is time for us to take over our story and to maintain our story because we are kings and queens that just so happen to be kidnapped and put into a system that was meant to build this country to the greatness that it is. We did that. That's the story we tell it. We did that. So my name is Winston Longmore, a former member of New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church. And I'm here just supporting my church and just the celebrating the greatness of of our of our culture and and just the history of uh, everything that we've we had to uh, go through um, in this country and just really um, celebrating the blessing today of freedom at last and um, it's just such a blessing to be a part of this event and and, and help out uh, God is good to allow this get together in the midst of a pandemic and I'm just so blessed to have my church members and family and friends with me, supporting me through this event, along with my wife that has put a lot of effort into this event as well. I'm the husband of Maya Longmore, and I'm just enjoying myself, and uh, I look forward to the next event next year. 
Hi, my name is Arlene, and I'm here at the first, uh, the third annual first outside African Landing Day here in Burlington, Vermont. I want to say that this is a wonderful experience for the community to come together and come in unity and understand how the impact of the African American community in Burlington, Vermont, and across the state of Vermont has made a wonderful impacting mission statement and needs to be continued forward and propelled forward with all of the community resources that it needs and all of us coming together. This is a wonderful opportunity and event for all of us to come together, to network together, to appreciate ourselves and our struggles and our journeys. And that is why exactly I am here in order for us to participate in such a lovely and beautiful event that we can all participate in and understand how we need to be a better, better Vermont, understanding our African-American culture and our African-American brothers and sisters. And I am happy and proud to be here.